So let's look at example five here. Now, this question asks, solve for an angle given the exact value for the sine, cosine, or tangent ratio. Now, when you see the exact value of an angle, that probably means we're going to be focusing on our special triangles here. And why is that? This is because if we recall back to math 10, how would we find this angle? So our math 10, 10c abilities, we would say sine angle equals 0 0.5. So in order to find what this angle is, we're going to do the inverse of sine 0 0.5. And that will find the angle. Well, let's plug that into our calculator and see what shows up. So make sure we're in degree mode, and we are in degree mode here. So I'm going to do second sine, so I have inverse sine, 0 0.5, and we can see that actually worked out. That gave us 30, okay? So that is an exact value. So on a rare chance, this might work. Now, the only problem here is that look at our restrictions. You always want to focus on the restriction of the angle. The angle can exist between 0 and 360, so we actually have a lot more work to do, okay? And I'm going to explain to you why. So let's look at A, and we're going to kind of write this out. So we know that sine angle equals 0 0.5. What did we do here? We took the angle and we inverse signed 0 0.5. And that ended up giving us 30 degrees. Now, let's think about our cast rule for a second. So I'm going to draw a Cartesian plane, the coordinates x and y, and I'm going to write out cast. So if you don't remember what cast is, you'll have to go watch the previous video, but that tells us where all the positive, which quadrants have positive ratios. So here, cosine is positive. This is all is positive. Sine's positive here. Tan's positive here. Cast. Now, sine here is positive 0 0.5. Sine can be positive in which quadrants? Well, it can be positive in the all quadrant. And then, of course, it can be positive in the second quadrant, because sine is positive there. Now, in this case, what's occurring? Well, we just found that the angle that creates sine to be 0.5 is 30 degrees. But we have an additional angle that falls between 0 and 360. So as a little reminder, this is 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees. Now, what we're saying is this angle here, let's do it in the same color, this angle here is also going to give that 0 0.5 ratio. And how do we figure that out? Well, we just have to remember that this shares the reference angle 30. So in this case, this little section here, which we'll call our reference angle, equals 30 degrees. So therefore, we can then solve for our question angle here. Let's call this angle 1. So angle 1 will equal, well remember, this is our reference angle. This is the angle we're trying to solve for. And here is 180 degrees. So if we take away 30 from 180 degrees, we're just left with this section here. So 180 degrees minus 30 degrees. And let's check what that gives us. So I'm going to open up my calculator. And I'm going to do 180 minus 30. And that gives us an angle of 150 degrees. So now let's check if this is true. So if I plug in sine 30, I'm going to expect to get 0 0.5, which is true. So here I am checking. 
So sine 30 equals 0 0.5. So that worked out. Now let's try our other value, sine 150. That gives us 0 0.5. So we can see that two angles fit within our restrictions between 0 and 360 degrees. And now we have exact values, 30 and 60. So my angles that work here, the angles are 30 degrees. and 150 degrees. So it might take a little bit to wrap your brain around that. Recognize we could have also used our special triangles, but honestly, that might be a little bit harder. The biggest things when you come to these questions is note restrictions, okay, so note restrictions, Question, if there is two solutions. Because at most, there could be two solutions. At the least, there could be one. So let's try out B here. So B, we have cos, equal, cos angle equals negative root 3 over 2, where we're existing between 0 and 180 degrees. So now we are actually cutting a portion out. So at this point, we have, or existing between zero and 180 degrees. So we can actually knock out two of these quadrants. We do not care about the third and the fourth quadrant because it's between zero and 180 degrees. So this section of our graph, we're not even gonna focus on. Now, recall what cast is. Cast is super useful. It tells us where our ratios are positive and negative. Note that this cos is negative. So if we write cast, let's figure out where cos could be negative. Where is cos going to be negative? Well, cos will not be negative here because all of them are positive. So cos is positive here. In this case, sine is the only one that will be positive here. So cos is negative. Down here, tan is the only one that is positive. So cos is negative here. And here, cos is the only one that's actually positive. So cos is positive. Again, we do not care about this section here because of the fact our restriction tells us that we exist between 0 and 180 degrees. So now, where is my optional place? Well, it's negative root 3 over 2. So we're going to exist in this area here. We can exist here because cos is positive, so we're going to exist in the second quadrant because cos is only negative in our given restriction area. So our terminal arm is gonna be found here. Okay, so now we have started to figure out a bit about this, uh, a bit about this, this ratio here. Now remember what cos is. So if we look here, Cos angle is x over r. And remember, r is always positive. So we have a bit of stuff to work off of here. And we're going to use our previous knowledge. So cos angle equals x over r. r is always positive. So the reason that this ratio is negative is because of our x value, which makes sense because we're living in quadrant two. So since cos angle equals negative root three over two, we can assume that x equals negative root three, r equals two. And then from here, we can actually plug in a few values that we know. 
I'm going to drop down my triangle. And I know a bit about this now. This is negative root 3. Sorry. This side length here is negative root 3. And this r value here is 2. Now this is where our special triangles will become important. If we go up to our special triangle, check it out. We have a leg that is root 3. In our question here, we have a leg that is root 3. We have, a, have an hypotenuse of 2. We have an hypotenuse of 2. That would leave this to be the remaining leg of 1. So this here is going to be 1. We can now throw down some angles. So first of all, we know this to be 90 degrees. The opposite angle of 60 degrees is the leg root 3. Or sorry, the opposite leg of 60 degrees is root 3. So that means that this angle here would have to be 60 degrees because it's opposite of root 3. So this is our 60 degree angle here. And what does that leave this angle to be? That leaves it to be 30 degrees. It's opposite of the leg of unit 1. So this is 30 degrees. And hopefully you see what I've been able to do here. I have now found my reference angle. Meaning, I can determine this angle because this angle here, we're going to call this the standard angle, is this angle here our standard angle. So we're going to use the reference angle to figure out our standard angle. And how are we going to do that? Well, we know that going all the way from 0 to 180 is 180 degrees. If we take away this section of 180 degrees, we're left with our standard angle. So we are going to do standard angle equals 180 minus 30 degrees. And that's going to give us 150 degrees. So here we only have one solution. Again, can we check this? Absolutely. Let's check. So I'm going to plug in cos 150 and check what that equals. So cos 150 gives us negative 0 0.866025, so on and so forth. Let's check what this value is. So let's write this down. If we plug in negative root 3 over 2, negative square root 3 over 2, that gives us negative 0.8666. Or sorry, negative point. negative 0 0.886025. So it checks out. Now, you might be asking yourself, why doesn't 30 degrees work here? That's because your calculator, when you plug in values in your calculator, it's using these standard angles. So here, we get a positive 0.866, or sorry, 0.866. And that's because we are not talking about this case we are talking about the standard angle, 30 degree angle, which would be here. So your calculator isn't as smart as yourself, okay? So just recognize that. I think I wrote oops, a few values wrong down there. So cos 150, oh, it is 8.86, I read that this value wrong here. 6. And this should be a 6 here. There we go. Okay. So hopefully you can see what occurred there. Again, you can, I kind of showed two different ways to solve it. This one using your calculator, but I would be weary of this one. I would get used to drawing out your triangle and asking yourself, do you know your reference angle or can you find that reference angle? And going from there. So 
have a shot at example five here, and I will go over it in a moment. I'm gonna grab my formula sheet, bring it down. Alrighty, so please pause the video and give it a shot. So let's look at example five together here. So example five says, solve sine angle equaling negative one over root two that's between zero and the angles between zero and 360. So again, you always are gonna start off with a Cartesian plane. You're gonna ask yourself about the cast rule here. Let's first figure out where can this possibly exist? Because we could have at most two solutions. So sine angle is a negative value. So what quadrants does that get rid of? That gets rid of quadrant two, because sine is positive there, and quadrant one, because sine is also positive there. Here, tan is only positive, cos is only positive, therefore making negative sine values. So we can exist in quadrant three or four. So we can kind of just ignore this whole section of our Cartesian plane. So now at this point, let's ask ourselves what sine angle is in terms of x and r. So sine angle equals y over r. So let's write that out. Sine angle equals y over r. And now we can see that we have a ratio here and we have our values here. Remember the thing about R, it's always positive. So this negativity of sine is coming from your Y value. So we're gonna apply that negative to the top number. So your Y value is gonna be negative one, your R value be root two. And now we can start drawing out possible triangles. So here we have one case that could work. And this case could work because of the fact if we drop down our value here, or sorry, our leg, then we're dealing with a right triangle. And let's list everything we know. R here equals root two. The Y value here is negative one. And remember that's because the Y value here is negative one. But recognize you can have this setup also in this region here. You can extend your, your, uh, your hypotenuse and then have a y value of negative one. So we have another case going on here. And there is our other case. So here we have the exact same setup just in a different quadrant. So r equals root two. And then we can drop down our leg and now we have a length of negative one here so you have two possible solutions here now how are we going to find these possible solutions well the first thing i recommend again is let's look oops let's look at our unit or special triangles let's see if we can see them sometimes they might not be there but most of the time for now they will so we have a hypotenuse of root two there's a hypotenuse of root two you have a leg of one so we have a leg of one therefore meaning our other leg would also be the length of one so we can state that here we have another leg of one in this case over here it would have to be a negative value and now we can start listing our angles, which is actually what we care about in this case. So let's note where the 90 degree angle is. So your 90 degree angle is found here and found here, leaving the two other angles to be 45 degrees because we're dealing with a, uh, an isosceles triangle, meaning two of the angles are identical. So 45 and 45. So this will be 45 here. <clears throat> This will be 45 here. 
45 degrees here, 45 degrees here. And now remember, when you're dealing with these questions, this is always referring to the standard angle. In this case, we have noted the reference angles of the two, but in order to solve this question, we need to identify this standard angle and this standard angle. So let's just note this as case one, case two. We don't have to draw it out perfectly. I just want to have a bit of a cleaner slate here in order to determine this. So we know at this point, this is 45 degrees, but we want to know the standard angle that creates this reference or this terminal arm. So I'll call this standard angle one. So we can figure this out fairly easily if we know how if we know how reference angles and standard angles interact with each other. So this is 180 degrees here, and we know that this is 45 degrees. So if we add 180 plus 45, we will get our standard angle. So the standard angle will be 180 plus 45 degrees, and we can figure out our first standard angle is 225 degrees. So there is our first solution. Let's figure out case number two here. So again, we have a Cartesian plane. Zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees. Our terminal arm extended out here. We determined that this was 45 degrees for our reference angle. And now we can figure out our standard angle, which I'll call standard angle two. So ask yourself quickly, how would you solve for the standard angle here? Well, in this case, I know if I go all the way around a full rotation, that's 360 degrees. And if I take away 45 degrees from our full rotation, I'm left with my blue standard angle. So I'm gonna do 360 degrees minus 45 degrees. So 360 degrees minus 45 degrees. So in this case, I get 315 degrees. Now, can we check our solution? We absolutely can. So let's quickly check before we move forward. So what did we say the original ratio was? It was negative one over root two. So let's figure out what negative one over root two equals quickly in decimal form. So this equals negative 0 0.707. I wanna check if I plug in my standard angles into this ratio, or sorry, into this sign, will I get negative 0 0.707? And it should actually be the exact value of this. So sine 225, we can see that that works and our sign is correct. Let's check sine 315 degrees. And we can see that that works out as well. So we have now determined the exact angles that create this ratio for sine that exist between zero and 360 degrees. So I hope that made sense. There is another solution listed down below, but of course, this one might be a little confusing just because it doesn't completely list the fact that they knew it was 45 degrees because of uh, our special triangles. So always reference your special triangles. If any of these numbers pop up, root two, one, root three, two, or one, then you can solve it. I would suggest challenging yourself to go back to A and solve it without your calculator. 0.5 is 1 over 2. Sine angle equals 1 over 2. Recognize you can easily find that you have 1 over 2. Your opposite is 1, 
and 2. So that means you're dealing with a 30 degree angle, which is what we actually were able to find here. And then you just have to apply cast in order to figure out the fact that you have two angles. So I would suggest solving these problems, probably using the methods that were done in B here and in example 5. If you have any questions, please come ask. This is where trig can start getting a little tricky. So make sure you're asking lots of questions if you're feeling like you're confused. Have a great day.